It's only a few years old, yet enterprise mobility is on the verge of realizing its promise. What is the promise that enterprise mobility is making? Well, the promise is that it's promising freedom and flexibility to all mobile workers to choose how they work. Hello and welcome to ET Now. I'm Manvi Dhillon and you're watching Airtel Business Presents Empowering Enterprises Powered by the Economic Times. Meet our panel today. Shyam Mardikar, Chief Architecture and Engineering, Bharti Airtel. Venkat Raman Swami Nathan, Director Sales, Information Technology Business Unit at Schneider Electric. Dr. Rishi Bhatnagar, Global Head, Digital Enterprise Services, Tech Mahindra. And Ambarish Das Gupta, Head of Management Consulting and Partner, KPMG India. Thank you all very much for making the time for joining us on this show. First fundamental question, enterprise mobility in the Indian context, what is spurring it? Mr. Mardikar, would you like to go first? See, the fact that uh, Indians are now getting mobile, India is now the third largest, second largest in fact over the last six, seven months, second largest internet population of the world, 300 million internet users, means 300, users who are 300 million users who are red ready to go digital. And if these guys and, and people, if they walk in the, the domain of enterprise and the workers, they would use the same devices, same connectivity, same feeds to drive their productivity while they are not around their respective offices. So it's a great start to, uh, to begin with. I believe we have a lot of potential to go ahead to, to, to deliver what we achieved, what we want to achieve. But on and on, it's, it's, a, it's a great start for the new guys joining enterprise. The whole new generation, the Gen Y, which is now going out of colleges and, and hitting the industry, is all ready to actually deliver whatever their productivity is in and outside office without any difference in their uh, way of um, doing things. They're pushing enterprise mobility. You're used to ease of access on your smartphone. You demand it at your workplace. And it triggers a cycle that enterprises can't stop in a sense. That's one push. Uh, Mr. Das Gupta, what else is out there spurring enterprise mobility in the Indian context? Productivity gains, efficiency improvements, these are all goals or carrots that are dangled in the context of enterprise mobility? See, it's becoming the, for the enterprises, whichever industry they may be in, it's becoming so hugely competitive globally as well as locally to push my product, to sell my product at a right price at the right time, to capture the right talent, to retain it. Everything is becoming so competitive that the fundamental thing is a real-time decision and real-time gathering the information and a real-time analytics. So how soon I can take a spot decision, I can capture the happening, whatever that happening may be, wherever it may be happening, and can churn out an immediate analytics which will help the decision. And that's basically the trigger, possibly, to create an enterprise mobility. Productivity, efficiency, definitely those are important things. But I also feel that the real-time decision, real-time information, and real-time analytics to make myself more competitive is also one of the fundamental trigger of these uh, enterprise mobility. You've described the current business environment, and you're saying that in the current business environment, enterprise mobility is a must-do. Would you agree, Dr. Bhatnagar? I fully agree with uh, both Shyam and uh, Amrish, the way you know they are describing the competitive landscape and the need for a real time. I just want to add one more point which just came to my mind is the push from the government side as well. You know, the Digital India Initiative, the Smart City Initiative, the Ganga Rejuvenation, all of these are just trying to see how can you have with your mobile, with your you know, connectivity availability, how can you transfer the governance and the accessibility to different things through these channels. And that's also one of the major push, which is, you know, they're, they're going to be the biggest investors. In this, in this field. Well, so the government is one large yeah. mammoth enterprise yeah, in, itself, in itself. And its consumers are demanding real-time information, Absolutely. quick information. And I think this uh, enterprise mobility push by the government yeah. is in response to that as well. We're trying to summarize a list of factors at play in the current environment that are spurring enterprise mobility. Have we missed anything out? You know, uh, it's a digital age. It's uh, Waiting in the queue for an STD call to on an, <laughs> on an app, uh, we are able to do everything. It's delightful to be in this age. 
Having said that, you know, uh, the organizations and uh, the setups are so large nowadays and uh, you can come together in a virtual uh, situation on the fly. So that's something which is uh, really getting people together in enterprises. As, as everybody said, that improving the productivity and the organizational output, that's, I, I thought, was the key. And uh, I, I'm, uh, you know, seeing that enterprise mobility is going to gain traction on these uh, few points. You've all painted the ideal. Now let's take stock of the reality. And in the Indian context, if you had to dissect Indian enterprises today, big versus large, traditional versus service industries, um, in a sense, old school, stodgy industries versus new age, how does it dice up? Where is the enterprise mobility charge much stronger versus others? I'd like each of you to reflect on that. Uh, Mr. Dasgupta first. I think the need has been felt by all, regardless of the industry or of the size. So they all ap they understand that why it has to be there. It is the question of how fast one can move. Now, my, 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 my feeling is or my guess is that the larger the organizations have, they have institutionalized legacy applications, systems, process, not just IT systems, their own systems, which are very ingrained running. So now, if I really want to change those legacy applications to cater to this real-time uh, data, real-time decision, real-time analytics, capturing all the data which is coming from the mobile, development of the interesting applications which will back-end integrate to those uh, legacy applications, that's a lot of work to do. That mm -hmm. actually imposes a huge amount of change management. Even if I want to move out from the systems that I have been following so far, not the IT systems, even in the human side also, it's a huge amount of change that one really needs to bring in. So therefore, possibly in their cases, the movement can be slightly slower. It could be more based on some needs in some isolated areas and then institutionalize an entire enterprise mobility can come uh, a little later. Whereas the small and medium enterprises who possibly are not constrained by having any legacy applications, legacy systems, going for newer systems, newer processes, can have a little bit more advantage in adopting it. So maybe they can uh, be much more aggressive adopters because they're starting from a clean slate. Um, do you see it more visible in some industries? And your comments, Dr. Patnagar, on whether or not uh, you know large organizations with legacy systems are yeah. somewhat slower adopters. I'll, uh, you know, the Charles Darwin's theory, it's not the biggest or the intelligent of the spicy species that survives, but the most adaptive one, hmm. okay? <laughs> That's one part. So it's not, you know, if you are a too big an organization, you might be slow. You know, the customer demand is there, the customer need is there. You will be forced, okay? And that's one thing which I always, you know, speak about. And when you were talking about divide, okay, I personally feel that one of the reason for the startups to start is the enterprise mobility, okay? So that's huge enterprise, you know, new startups which has started up and, you know, three, three people sitting in a garage coming out with a new solution. Is and rollout is easy. And rollout is easy. Of enterprise and that's mobility. what, you know, one part. The second divide is, you know, um, uh, billion subscribers, but only 10 to 15 percent of the smartphone subscribers. And if our market is a farming market, and then, you know, we talk about our group, Mahindra, then we are talking to the uh, farm equipments and all. So we, they are still using those 2,000 rupee device. And I need to send them messages, whether it's a wheat price in a trading shop, or the, when the rain is going to come, what is the right time for the crop? Or this is the kind of price I'm charging for any of my farm equipment. And that's the kind of market that's also an enterprise mobility. And that's but how we are doing it. But potentially a market that requires a slightly different architecture Absolutely. from um, a, you know, a market that is riding yes. on smartphones. We're just going to pause there for a second. Time for a quick break. When we return, we'll examine in within organizations whether there are certain verticals, certain functions that, again, are early adopters of enterprise mobility. That and much more in a moment. Welcome back. You're with ET Now and you're watching Airtel Business Presents Empowering Enterprises Powered by the Economic Times. Let's examine whether within organizations there are certain departments uh, that are looking at enterprise mobility uh, with much more interest than others. Um, 
what comes to your mind, uh, Mr. Venkatraman, uh, as you know, functions uh, that are out there, mature uh, enterprise mobility users? Yeah, very interesting point. Uh, if I divide it into very large and very large enterprises and small and medium enterprises, I would say that uh, the adaptation in the large and very large enterprises because of the legacy systems, uh, like Mr. Das Gupta said, it's going to be slow. And uh, I would say that uh, we are still at a proof of concept stage are slightly uh, better than that. Whereas there is a need of the R in the smaller enterprises to be efficient and productive. And as a result of the layers of management being what it is, the adaptation is much faster. The utilization of these uh, mobility uh, uh, advantages are much, much faster. When you talk about functions, uh, well, sales uh, being what it is, it's, it's a tough ask in most organizations. But uh, I, I would say that the maturity of the essence of collaborations have come in because they understand that you have to collaborate and win in large organizations. In services, it has become the need of the hour. When, when you're talking about uh, customer services as well as uh, an organization's, enterprise organization's install based services. Now, it's a, a ticket is raised in the call center when you call them, and then that ticket is closed. And the faster you close, you create a differentiation in the enterprise market. And therefore, it is but necessary for moving into the enterprise mobility area in the services, and it's evolving in sales. Whereas in another fu support function like HR, it's, I would say that it's taking its uh, uh, time. It will evolve thanks to the social media proliferation. It is going to take that much more time. Mr. Madhikar, you have a bird's eye view. As a provider, you know what's going on uh, you know, across functions, across industries. So I want you to share with us real examples. You don't have to name the companies, but of interesting things that are being facilitated by enterprise mobility. See, very, very, very relevant question, man. Let me break it into two parts. One is, how do you define the digital maturity of an organization, of an enterprise? How do you say that they have crossed some level of sophistication, some level of maturity, some level of adoption, and how do you finally get to measure it? And if you look at that, the easiest way to look at companies is like we look at people. Enterprises are like people. You have people who are late bloomers, you have people who are sharp, you have people, you have a generation which has a time advantage. Any company which gets born post-2000 or post the digital revolution will naturally look at the digital assets and using those digital assets in a natural manner. And if I split that within functions like you asked, some functions which have more, let's say, continuous focus on being outside office but being connected. And Salesforce automation is a classical example where uh, the digital maturity in most companies are have reached seriously sophisticated levels wherein right from booking an order or, or the whole order to cash cycle is now mature uh, now monitored outside the office. You don't need to be physically anywhere or don't need to do any discrete transaction per se. Fleet management, for example. Uh, any any. So the way I look at it is intuitively the most moving part of the organization or the functions which physically moves most is getting to adopt faster and faster. But there's, there's one other very, very critical factor which we need to take into account is the thought leadership of the of the of the company in in ensuring that the company force sales not sales office headquarters adapt to that kind of digital processes uh, making an automated platform and getting that ready for a digital sophistication is very easy to do but how will you ensure that the whole pyramid of your organization right from the chief executive to the last man on the ground uses those from a digital perspective uses those processes the way there's been envisaged and there are there are some very very small companies starting with service sector i'd agree with venkat because uh, the connect with people is is much more real time there uh, where the adoption is is gaining a bigger momentum than those of classical manufacturing industries yeah. wherein you have a very clear produce and sell kind of yeah. kind of culture where where the debate is bigger it's, it's kpi driven as you rightly pointed out services is kpi driven if you don't service at that you lose yeah. the customer i want to focus on really what the missing elements are and some of this has to do with pure technology development where is this technology going so you know we were talking offline about the need for middleware middleware being that strong essential link between old erp systems and new mobile needs. Yeah. Uh, 
just dwell a little bit on some of the big components that we and Indian enterprises need to focus on? Honestly, there are a number of platforms which are now available in the market mm -hmm. that can interact between the new generation technologies and the old legacy one. So that technology gap, you know, honestly, I am coming from the IT services company. We have developed those kind of, you know, wrappers, whatever we call it, and I can keep naming them. But, you know, there are wrappers available which can, you know, have those, uh, uh, the APIs, what we call it, okay, which can interact between the and provide the services. Now there is a need and there is a visibility of enterprises going for a dig chief digital officers. Hmm. You know, the role of a CIO and a CMO of a chief information officer and a chief marketing officer is converging and getting into the chief de uh, digital officer who is trying to create the complete digital strategy as per the business vision of the organization. And there the technology is just one part of that overall business vision. And when you are talking about the digital, you know, the technological gaps, Honestly, you know, while there can be, you know, you can imagine any kind of business kind of needs and technology can have some kind of uh, uh, gaps in it, but right now technology is quite advanced okay. and we are working on it. Well, I would have loved <laughs> to open up a debate on whether the technology is keeping up with the enterprise mobility needs, but you know what, we'll take a quick break, come back and address whether or not companies need to be more energized in their app development if they want to make enterprise mobility a reality, that and much more after a quick break. Welcome back to ET Now. You're watching Airtel Business Presents, Empowering Enterprises, powered by the Economic Times. We're talking about the ecosystem around enterprise mobility, and technology is one piece of that puzzle. There are other pieces of that puzzle. You know, the ecosystem needs to develop and keep pace adequately. Uh, Mr. Mardika, reflect on some of the elements in the ecosystem that perhaps aren't, uh, well, they're lagging behind a shade. She looks just look at the end user and the end consumer of, of this enterprise mobility and, and, and then you change the whole concept from managing the technology part to servicing the technology part because managing technology within our data centers, within our platforms, like we've been alluding to is an easy part of it. How do you service it so that the end user actually consumes it the way it is envisaged to be consumed? And that is where I believe our biggest challenges lie. I believe there are four very, very clear pillars and directions wherein we need to focus as an industry uh, to, to address this. Uh, first is, is, is around the connectivity part of it. How does the consumption or the connectivity of the user become ubiquitous? That's pillar one. Pillar two is device. How do we understand the terminal which is actually able to consume the way I want it to consume? Once this is done, there are two more critical and sophisticated pillars that hit you uh, uh, with, with the challenges and foremost being the security part of it. In a country where the movement and the infrastructure is so challenged, it is very, very difficult to track a device once it is lost. And if I carry my office with me, and that's the whole essence of enterprise mobility, I lose my whole office if I lose the device. How do, how do I back up on the fly? How do I secure on the fly? How do I encrypt on the fly? Those would be some very, very clear challenges around securing this particular platform. And, and fourth, last but not the least, how do I make the whole enterprise application management system more user friendly more intuitive for a user to adopt and 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 trying those trying those adoptions because as 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 users as employees of an organization we are used to those very straight jacketed it systems desktop based it systems which have been using and now we are actually moving almost 180 degree apart from something which is very very fuzzy, very intuitive, very user friendly to use. Well, on that's more of a challenge for the enterprise than for the end user, perhaps. <laughs> but it's certainly a challenge for the enterprise. Yeah. You put four very important points on the table. There are pillars and there are issues. I mean, you know, security is nothing that uh, is certainly uh, something that you can't sweep under the carpet. But I just want to focus for a moment on connectivity. And I know that connectivity slash infrastructure is of particular interest to you at Schneider Electric. Uh, elaborate on what the challenges are around that. Telecom, the raw material is electricity. And uh, telecom industry consumes the second largest uh, fossil fuel, diesel, to power these uh, base transfer receiving stations. 
So this is where the actual energy dilemma or the energy challenge comes and in. And it's firmly linked to the whole non-stop connectivity absolutely, proposition. Absolutely, absolutely. So he he so referred to uptime. Yeah. yeah. So what's you know what's the light at the end of the tunnel in a sense? So so uh, so the 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 uh, you know the regulations are coming up that uh, use alternative sources of energy like solar. Um, you know, uh, consolidate based on the unified licensing. Consolidate the switch centers and the data centers, and uh, power them up. And uh, this is where uh, companies like us, uh, Schneider Electric, uh, we uh, we call ourselves global uh, you know champions in energy management. And this is where we work with the industry very very closely in trying to bring in how do we improve the energy efficiency of the existing infrastructure. How do you create a new infrastructure which is already the best in class? We sure. call the power usage effectiveness. So that's that's the uh, improvement area which is being brought up. Final thoughts from all of you: the future of enterprise mobility in India. I want you to uh, you know share your vision of where we go from here. Uh, summary thoughts, Mr. Daskupta. If all the telecom related issues can be even further more improved, that there is no drop the bandwidths are very uh, sufficient. If we also can improve the energy conservation because it does not really make the whole world or whole country very polluted and we can conserve that. Uh, purely from the applicability perspective, I think there is a big future. But I'm again saying that the, it, it is very dependent on the economic situation also because if the economy is not doing well, the enterprise mobility suddenly just as a fancy tool cannot survive if the economy is not doing well. But I must again go back and reaffirm the importance of combining the enterprise mobility strategy to a proper well laid out business strategy. Mr. Mardekar. Vision perspective, I believe I would like to leave it with a simple statement that as an employee, if my productivity is not any different from the fact that I stay in office or I'm outside the office, the day we hit that particular point of arrival, I believe as, as maturity on digital era or as enterprise mobility perspective, we would have arrived. It should not matter whether I am, I am physically present at a place to be able to deliver what am I supposed to deliver in the most efficient and most productive manner. And that is achievable, I'm assuming. 100%. 100%. <laughs> uh, Mr. Venkatraman. BYOD, Internet of Things, the EMM as a concept is a reality. We have to embrace it. While doing so, the amount of carbon emissions which we are not seeing actually in the background has to be taken care of. And as I, I agree that energy efficiency story has to tie along for the telecom and internet uh, you know, uh, convergence. Uh, that's the point I would like to leave it with. Yeah. So I'll do speak in a very different manner in this particular case. You know, the first revolution which we call as an industrial revolution came in 1850s. And the mankind visibility on this earth was in 9000 BC. That means it took somewhere around say 11,000 years for a human brain to become mature enough to mm -hmm. come out of the first revolution. The second revolution came in the communication and the internet in 1995. That means the second revolution came in 150 years, the maturing of the brain. The third revolution has arrived in the less than 20 years. Okay, so we are living in the third revolution and we are very, you know, we should be very happy that in our lifespan we are seeing the second revolution and hope to see much more because the revolutions are getting much faster. Well, since so I'm <laughs> practical by nature, I can't resist the urge to throw in a final comment from Mr. Das Gupta on, as we pursue this goal of enterprise mobility, how, in three simple steps, do we measure return on investment, or is there no simple answer to that? <laughs> no, as uh, today uh, uh, we jokingly say that at some point in time, IT was always measured against an ROI, and therefore we mentioned that even when a photocopier machine was uh, bought, people used to measure the ROI of that photocopier machine. Now nobody says that what is the ROI of the <laughs> photocopier machine. So similarly, enterprise mobility, one may, we may actually reach a stage when there will be no such ROI calculated because it will become so integral part of our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, thing. But of course, at this point in time, maybe that is futuristic, productivity, efficiency, my sales, again, my standard KPIs, which we are defining as my business strategy, we need to identify how much of those are being catered to by the enterprise mobility. Yeah.
So don't lose sight of those as uh, you pursue the enterprise mobility goal. So it's not mainstream yet, enterprise mobility, but signs suggest that we're on that path. Thank you all very much for joining us on the panel today. And thank you to our viewers for watching Airtel Business Presents Empowering Enterprises, powered by The Economic Times. Thank you.